Hello there. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, my name's Headley, and I'm going to do a couple of things in this video. First things first, I'm going to be doing um, some VCLT from a lovely chap. Um, I'll come on to that. And then I've got some new records that I've picked up, some sealed records. Um, yeah, they're not all new, but they're all they're all brand new out of the cellophane. So um, I'm going to start with uh, talking about a guy called Steve Carlson. And Steve Carlson has probably been in the vinyl community now for, I don't know, is it a year, um, Steve? I, 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 I can't remember. Um, but he... His videos were a breath of fresh air when I first started watching them because he clearly loves his music. In fact, I think one of the first videos I saw him do was Why My, Re my, Why my Taste in Music Sucks. I might be wrong. Um, but basically it talked about how he was introduced to a, a wider um, sort of uh, spread of, of music um, when he realised actually that that what he was listening to was very sort of a, very narrow. Anyway, so Steve has been in, around for about a year. He, like I said, um, a breath of fresh air. They are funny, witty, informative. Um, it's it's almost like it's like the fireside chat when you uh, <laughs> when you uh, sit down and watch uh, Steve do one of his videos. Um, anyway, um, if you haven't checked out Steve. Um, Steve Carlson, I think he's called Steve Carlson Vinyl Community. Um, I will put a link, guess where? Down below. Um, and uh, yeah, and so uh, if you haven't checked him out, check him out because his videos are great. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about him is I got a package in the post all the way from America and it blows me away um, that people on the other side of the world um, want to share their love of music and um, and pass on a bit of uh, vinyl across the pond. So, um, Steve, I mean, above and beyond the call of duty, really was. Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I uh, this package arrived and I quickly set about ripping into it and having a look at what he had sent me. Shall we have a look at what he sent me? Yes, I think we'll look at what he sent me. Okay, first of all, we're starting with um, a record by Clifton Chenier. Um, Clifton Chenier is um, a Zydeco uh, accordion player. That's him there. I understand that's his brother on washboard. Um, and yeah, so Clifton Chenier was known as the, the king of Cajun, uh, the king of Cajun, the king of um, uh, Zydeco, or as it's called on here, French Creole Dance. And um, actually there's a lot of artists in the um, Zydeco area that want to call themselves the king of Zydeco. And uh, I've seen at least three or four posing wearing uh, crowns. But Clifton Chenier is probably the, the one that could... Um, legitimately call himself the King of Zydeco. Anyway, this is a live album um, on the Ar Arhuli uh, label, which records uh, releases a lot of uh, Cajun, uh, Zydeco, um, Tex-Mex. Um, and it's from 1972. Um, it's a recording of a live um, concert gig in 1971 uh, in California. And there's the back. There's some great picture shots of... There he is, actually, wearing his... Uh, his crown, there you go. Uh, I love those pictures, they're wonderful. Um, and it's great. If you don't know um, Zydeco, Zydeco is played by the sort of French Creole um, communities in Louisiana and also in Texas because they moved across um, to look for work on the oil fields. And um, it's a kind of a, a folky blues so blues with accordion and washboard. It's um, a great, infectious, danceable type of music. And you can hear that in this recording. It's an amazing recording. Uh, uh, it's clearly not a huge 
concert hall. Well, it's a, it's a well, it's not a concert hall, is it? It's a they're playing at a dance, and you can hear the audience, and the crowd are just brilliant. You can hear their sort of encouragement and the kind of vibe they're getting off um, the music, and it's wonderful. It comes with uh, a nice little um, fold out, which is pretty cool. Um, is it? So the the Night Times, uh, the Bay Area's entertainment newspaper. But I understand it's just a kind of a I think R. Hooley put it together with a couple of articles about. There's another picture of him, and on the back that's an article from Rolling Stone, which shamefully I haven't read yet. Um, and yeah, it's got um, a list of different albums that he's released. But that's a nice little extra. So I will read that at some point. But the problem is. I'm I'm in the process of reading my book, um, South to Louisiana. Um, actually, has that got him on the cover? No, it hasn't. Uh, what was that here? No. So uh, when I've got through that, maybe I'll have some time. But it's quite a big book. Um, great, great read. Um, interesting stuff about the the birth of Cajun and and Z Zydeco. Uh, so yeah, so that's first. So Clifton Chenier, uh, Arhuli, 1972. Great record. Great record. What else did he send me? He sent me Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, this is the golden cream of country. Mm. Um, and this is on Sun Records. It's 1969. But what this is, it's um, a guy called Shelby Singleton who um, had worked at um, Smash Records and Mercury as a producer. Um, he started his own labels, Plantation and SS International, Shelby Singleton International, and in 1969 he bought um, the catalogue um, of Sun Records from Sam Phillips um, and set about, I mean considering this is from 1969, again he set about um, uh, releasing anything that was in the um, in the vaults at Sun Records and repackaging stuff. He didn't get any of the uh, Elvis recordings, I'd I, I think, but basically anything in anything was was that was left lying around, and these were I think um, originally mono, and it's one of those things where they've been most of them. I think a couple of them aren't. Most of them have been um, updated, updated, um, transferred to to um, uh, fake stereo, um, and they're older recordings clearly that have been spruced up. And what you've got on here need the glasses, is you've got, uh, as it says, it's, it's country. So you've got Cold Cold Heart, Jambalaya, um, Frankie and Johnny. Yeah, so it's great. Um, Jerry Lee Lewis, apparently a horrible person. Um, horrible, horrible person. Um, but a great talent and it's a nice record to have. There's, there he is on the back, the killer. Um, so that's a, a nice record of, of um, Jerry Lee Lewis country. Courtesy of Shelby Singleton. Okay, next record we have is uh, Banjo Bandits by Roy Clark and Buck Trent. Still in the uh, cellophane here. Um, and, um, uh, but it is open. Um, and uh, this is, well, Roy Clark is a famous um, kind of guitar picker on here, banjo player, mandolin. Basically, he was a, a, a virtuosity on... Uh, a virtuosity? Yeah, let's go with that. On on many, many stringed instruments. And this one is him. I don't know Buck Trent. I haven't done my research, unfortunately. Um, and it's it's an instrumental album of the two of them on banjos. You've got, uh, I think, Johnny Grimble, Gimble turns up to play fiddle at one point. Um, and, um, yeah, it's it's good stuff. I didn't have any Roy Clark stuff. I've always wanted some Roy Clark, and this is a good one. It's bluegrassy. Well, you've got the banjos. It does kind of, at times, um, sort of uh, spill over into a bit of a Cockney knees up. Um, you know those sort of banjo jamboree albums that you got in the 70s? Um, there's a bit of that on here. So, I mean, I don't really want to hear them doing Roll Out the Barrel, but I do want to hear them doing a bluegrass breakdown, you know? So... Great picking, fast stuff, really nice sound, apart from the Cockney Knees Up stuff. Okay, um, the third, fourth record he sent me is um, Charlie Klein uh, with the Lonesome Pine Fiddlers. 
and there he is. And I think what's the Steve picked this up for me is because of that ridiculously tiny violin fiddle he's got there. Um, and this album is called Why Ray... I, can't, I knew I'd find, find it hard to say this. Why Ray Ralph. And actually, if you look at the... the it's a song title on it. And it says, Why Ray? Question mark. Ralph! Exclamation mark. So why Ray? Why Ray? Ralph? Why, why Ray? Why Ray? Ralph! I don't know. I don't quite get it. Anyway, it's got them doing Orange Blossom Special, Amazing Grace, Turkey in the Straw, Black Mountain Rag. Um, great stuff. Um, sort of blue grousey um, material. Um, Charlie Klein um, in the late 40s played um, in the... What's the name of the band? The, um, ba -ba 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 the Sunny Mountain Boys with Jimmy Martin before in the early, in the early 50s. Um, joining the uh, the Stanley Brothers and then moving on to to their arch rivals, the uh, uh, Bill Monroe, and, and um, he joined the Bluegrass Boys. So yeah, lovely bluegrass record. This is from uh, 1979, and it's on Old Homestead Records. I wonder if, what's the label look like. I don't normally do label. Oh, it's quite a nice label. Yeah, it's quite a nice Old Homestead. Hillbilly music. Really good stuff. So that's that's nice. That's great. Again, a great player. Uh, finally, the last record that Steve sent me um, is Texas Farewell. Uh, Texas Fiddlers, recorded 1922 to 1930. This was released in uh, 1969 on County Records. Um, and... This is great. I mean, it's early recordings of um, fiddle tunes. Um, I wasn't familiar with any of them on here, apart from it's got um, uh, Eck Robertson, who I have got some stuff by Eck Robertson on various other compilations. I'm trying to work out, is he on the Harry Smith American Folk Anthology? He might be. Anyway, um, it's also got uh, the Red-Headed Fiddlers. Um, do a couple of tunes. And what were they called? The uh, the East Texas Serenaders. So yeah, some of it's uh, solo fiddle, some of it's two fiddle, some of it's fiddle and banjo. Um, wonderful, wonderful record. Really nice. I like the very basic county label. Great, great stuff. Oh, I love this sort of stuff. I love that. Um, you know, some of these old tunes like The Fatal Wedding. Uh, great Big Taters. <laughs> Um, Texas Cricks. Oh, it's got Ar Ar Arkansas Traveller on here. Um, yeah. But really lovely, lovely, lovely album. And uh, Steve, what can I say? Um, absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for sending those along. Um, I will have to try and find something in the UK. I always find it very difficult. I've had a couple of friends uh, um, in, the U in the US send me things and it's kind of because I like country music so clearly I'm kind of easy to buy for or easy to, to find stuff for I'm kind of happy with anything that's a bit countryfied but I'm always a little bit kind of I don't really know I'd love to be able to say there's something in the UK that you can find everywhere that in the US is next to impossible to find so let me know if is there anything that that actually um, there's a surplus of here but in the US, you can't get it for love nor money. So that's a question for you. Right, okay. Now, I um, uh, followed a link um, on uh, Facebook the other week to a website, which, ha ha ha, I can't remember what's called. It was something like 365 games or something or something like that because it's basically a, a games um i think that's what it mostly did uh computer games um sales but i was introduced to a um a, a deal they had they had a deal on vinyl records not all of them but some um some picked out and um it was 20 pounds for two records and at 20 pounds for some of the stuff they had i i couldn't really pass it up you know how that goes um so 
let's have a look at what I got. I got three. Unfortunately, I, I you know, when I'd, I'd already bought three and paid twenty pounds. There were more records I wanted. There was a, um, a Billy Bragg record and a couple of June Carter records, um, one of which I've got on CD. But I would have liked those as well. But I, I felt, I felt buying, you know, forty quid's worth of records at one time um, was a little bit. Um, Spendthrift. No, is that the wrong word? That's spend. Yeah, no, no, that's not right, is it? That's the opposite. Um, yeah, that, it was too much anyway, and so I didn't pick those up. And I went back to the website, the uh, title of which I will put down to, below, so you can check it out from time to time. Well, if you're in the UK, uh, and see if there's anything going on because that's a great deal. Um, yeah, uh, what was I in the middle of saying? I can't remember. doesn't really matter. Let's just move on, Headley. Okay, so first of all, um, the, uh, the I picked up... This is um, an album called You Don't Know Me, Rediscovering Eddie Arnold. Now, Eddie Arnold... This is a nice double album. There he is. Nice shot of him. And... He was one of the biggest selling, and still is, I believe, one of the biggest selling uh, country music artists uh, of all time. Um, and this is a double album, um, tribute album, with, we've got Bobby Bear Jr., um, Frank Black, um, who else? Alejandro Escovedo, uh, Mary Gaucher, Jason Isbell, Pokey Lafarge, Lamb Chop. Oh, Lamb Chop do a great version of... Jim, I wore a tie today, which is wonderful. Um, Jason Ringenberg and Sylvian, 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 weird. And um, yeah, they they approach his songs. He was sort of forties and fifties, um, and so he was kind of like the the tail end of 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 the sort of the honky tonk. He was he was originally produced sort of music like that. Then. He was one of the uh, artists that would embrace the Nashville sound, adding the strings and um, choral sort of numbers. Um, and actually, there's a great interview with Eddie Arnold where he talks about um, selling out because there were people that, that you know that were traditionalists that wanted their country music to be country music. Um, didn't like it when they added strings and, uh, and it went all sort of mainstream. Um, and he, he he came up with a really nice sort of quote. He sort of said, he said, making music is like baseball. You're supposed to win. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, he followed the money. Anyway, lovely album. Um, we got versions of songs. I'm trying to think what you might know on here. Um, the, the Texarkana Baby... Um, oh, it's got oh cattle call on it, bouquet of roses. Oh, and make the world go away. Um, but it, but they they're done in in very interesting ways. Some of them are rocky, some of them are sort of western swing, jazzy. Very nice album. I can't recommend it more highly. Really nice. So that's called uh, "You Don't Know Me: Rediscovering Eddie Arnold" from 2013 on Plowboy Records. So that was the first. The second I picked up, and actually Steve Carlson showed an album by this band, and this is The Devil Makes Three. This is called Do Wrong Right, um, and they are a kind of an alt country. This is um, on their own label, self-released in 2009. Um, they're, yeah, kind of alt country, alternative country, Americana. Um, some of their other stuff I've heard by them is a little bit kind of gothic, um, kind of countryfied. But this is kind of, um, yeah, alternative country. Very nice stuff. Um, I think it's on some sort of see-through vinyl. Look at it, yeah, there you go. If you like that sort of thing. Bear with me. Right. Okay. Um, I was very pleased to find that they had Guy Guy Clark, um, my favourite picture of you. This is his last album. 
um, released in uh, 2013, or at least at least his 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 last studio album. Uh, and he died in sadly he died in 2016. Um, and that's a picture of his wife Susanna, who had who had just died prior to him recording this album. Um, and yeah, what can I say about Guy Clark? One of the great sort of songwriters, songwriters, um, uh, luthier, a guitar maker, um, part of the um, sort of seventies Texas uh, movement, alongside people like Towns Van Sant. He was good friends with Towns Van Sant, um, uh, Jerry Jeff Walker, people like that. Um, and yeah, so lovely to get those. So those three albums for brand brand new for twenty quid. Can't go wrong. Okay. Um, Talking about Guy Clark, what we have here is uh, Steve Earle. This is called uh, Guy, and it is a, an album of Guy Clark songs that he did uh, as a tribute. Um, and yeah, it's a, a double album. On um, It was released this year, it was, it's on the New West label. And he'd already done a, a Towns Van Sant record called Towns, which actually I didn't get. I don't know why. I think I've heard a lot of people do Towns Van Sant songs. So I, I kind of thought, oh, maybe I'd, I'd rather Steve Earle did his own. Um, he also did a, um, a Hank Williams album called uh, I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive. But this is like his third album of, of covers. Um, and yeah, um, Guy Clark songs. So probably the most famous ones on here are um, things like, uh, where is it? Somebody might, did not do it. Do they not? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. L.A. Freeway, of course, which Jerry Jeff Walker um, had a, a kind of a, a minor hit with. Um, but a lot of stuff from his early albums, um, Texas, 1947. Johnny Cash does a version of that. Desperados Waiting for a Train, which is just magnificent. Um, and actually, uh, I still need to listen to the second uh, album of this. So it's a nice back as well. Nice design. I like the guy who designed Steve Earle's records. They're a, they're a kind of they, they work very well with each other. Okay. So that's uh, Steve Earle, Guy. Um, another new album from uh, 2019, just came out a couple of months back. Uh, this is um, Tom Russell, October in the Railroad Earth. Um, and um, yeah, uh, if you don't know uh, Tom Russell, he's a kind of a country folk uh, artist. Um, if you like Johnny Cash, you might well like... Tom Russell and he produces continues to produce great great albums there's a picture of him on the back with the, what does it say it says ninja style kung fu um, and they're, they're, so this is on proper records um, and it's got a wonderful song on it called Isidore Gonzalez and it's all about a guy um, we're talking uh, 1890 somewhere like that maybe turn of the century um, he was a um, uh, a Spanish, not a Spanish, a Mexican um, horse rider um, who was um, in Buffalo Bill's uh, Wild West show, and they toured the world and they came to uh, Britain, and one of the venues they played was uh, Bristol, and unfortunately, while they were in Bristol, he had an accident and fell off his horse. And he's buried in Bristol to this day. I didn't know this. This song told me that. Um, yeah. Uh, I love that. Hand-raised wolverines. <laughs> Pass me the gun, Billy. Uh, when the road gets rough. And they do, does a version of The Wreck of the Old 97 as well. Um, yeah. If you like kind of Johnny Cash and things like that, this is a, a country artist I think you would like. He's a, I think he's a very much a country artist for people who don't like country artists. Um, great stuff and a great storyteller. Okay, final record. I got oh, this is the long video. Um, final record, Harlem County by Jim Ford. I saw this on eBay. Um, it was brand new, um, uh, uh, wrapped up and everything um, in its shrink, as you like to say, um, which I've happily removed. Um, and this is originally from. Um, 1969 on White Whale Records, which is Sundown Records, um, and this is a um, 2011 Light in the Attic uh, edition uh, of his album, and it's um, country funk. Um, it's a bit of a kind of a, um, it's an interesting cover, you know, up 
close, but not brilliant from the side. And it's got lots of writing on the back. But it's got the most amazing inside cover. That's Jim Ford. I don't know who the unfortunate lady is. Um, yeah, I'm not sure you get away with things like that these days. Um, yeah, Harlan County. A great tune, Harlan County. Um, what else have we got on here? I got Bonnie Br uh, uh, Bramlett song, uh, Willie Dixon song, uh, Alex Harvey. Not the sensational Alex Harvey, that is. Um, the other one. Um, yeah, great stuff. Uh, country funk. I love a bit of country funk. And that was really good. I got that for about a tenner. Um, I couldn't believe I got a bargain on that one. So that's a nice record. So there you go. That's your lot. Um, thank you very much for watching. Steve Carlson, you're an absolute star. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and I wish you all the best in the world. Um, so um, there we go. Um, I will say goodbye. I've got a lot of other things. I've been buying too many records. Um, but I've got a lot of stuff from the 70s that I, I want to share with you. So until then, bye-bye for now.